So this is going to be the first in a two-part series called Fortifying Facebook. Part one, which is going to be for the next five minutes or so, is going to focus primarily on security, though there's naturally going to be a bit of interplay between security and what will be part two of the series, which is going to be mostly dealing with uh, privacy settings. It was initially designed to be one video, but we ultimately decided that it would be more worthwhile to cut them down into two more easily digestible five or so minute videos. Can you have a Facebook account and your personal privacy too? No, not really. But you can do a pretty good job of keeping the personal information you post there between yourself, your friends, and Facebook, and whoever Facebook is giving your data to. For the purposes of this video, we're going to go ahead and assume that you already have a Facebook account. From there, we're simply going to run through some of the security, privacy, and general settings, activating each of the features and offering recommendations that increase security and ensure privacy. The first thing you have to do, if you haven't already, is go ahead and log in. Once you're logged in, scroll to the settings. Go down to see more settings. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go up to the general security settings and we're going to change our password. As always, the single most important aspect of security on Facebook and elsewhere on the web is making sure you create a strong and unique password. It's especially important that you change your password in light of the recent Heartbleed bug. It's not clear whether or not your Facebook password would have been impacted by that, but it never hurts to go ahead and change your passwords anyway. So go and create a strong, long, and unique password, making sure you mix in letters, numbers, symbols, spaces, and uppercases. probably a good idea to go ahead and log yourself out of other devices just in case, but you'll have to re-enter your password on any of your other devices. Next we're going to go ahead and jump down to the mobile tab. You really have a decision to make here. On the, on the one hand, linking your mobile number to your Facebook account opens up the possibility of enabling a, a list of nice security features. On the other hand though, what you're doing here is essentially handing your mobile number over to Facebook, which I guess is a bit of a privacy hit. Everything in this video is up to you, obviously, uh, but we're going to go ahead and assume that you want your, your mobile phone linked up just for the purposes of, of having access to those security features. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Now, there's a lot of moving parts here, so bear with me. So you're going to go over here to the mobile tab. You're going to click the add phone link. You're going to choose your country. I live in the U.S. You're going to choose your carrier. Mine is Verizon. Then you click next. Now you got to pull out your phone. And you're going to go ahead and you're going to text the letter F to 32665, which apparently is F book. Can't see it, but I'm doing that right now. Now I have my confirmation code. Before I enter that in, though, I'm going to go ahead and uncheck these boxes because I definitely don't want to share my phone number with my friends to any extent that I can control that. And I definitely don't want to allow my friends to text me from Facebook because that sounds obnoxious. So... Once you enter your confirmation number, you hit next, and there you are. You got your phone set up, you're good to go. Uh, now that we've established a mobile device, I want to go ahead and go back to the security settings. We're going to run through each of these tabs as quickly as possible and uh, discuss what they do. As a point of clarification, though, I'm running, as you can see, a bit of a strange browser. It's got a bunch of built-in security and privacy settings and some funny stuff with cookies. It's all great, but for whatever reason, Facebook doesn't like it, so it might not let me enact, uh, enable, rather, any of these features. But they're all pretty simple. We'll talk about what they do. Login notification. Definitely want to turn in login notifications. This, this way, if anyone logs into your account, you're going to get a notification about it. So I would definitely recommend text messages if you're anything like me. Your phone stays in your pocket, and a text message doesn't go unread for more than five minutes. Email, on the other hand, it could be an hour before I see an email. Save changes. If it were going to allow me to do this, it would then ask me to enter my password. 
Login approvals. Login approvals is just the Facebook way of saying two-factor authentication. You turn on login approvals. Whenever you try and log in, you'll have a security code sent to the mobile device that we just linked with the account. And then you'll log in, enter your password. Facebook will come up with a second screen that says enter security code. You grab it off your phone, you enter it. It makes it much, much harder to hijack an account. The other good thing about this is if you get a login approval code from Facebook when you're not trying to log in, that's a pretty good indication that someone has your password because that means that someone has just entered your password and has now been prompted to enter the security code. So if that ever happens, you're going to want to go ahead and change your password as soon as possible. It's not going to let me do it. It's okay. Code generator is basically a backup for login approvals. This way, if you have the Facebook app installed on your Android or iOS device, you can then go into that app and generate a one-time password that will act as your second factor security code. You may be wondering why this would be a, a feature. The reason is you don't necessarily always have access to a cellular network. So if you don't have access to a cellular network, you can't get an SMS code for your login approval. So the backup plan for that is that you can log into the app on your mobile device and just generate the code there. I wouldn't even mess with app passwords. I don't have any apps. I guess if you use apps, it's probably a good idea, but I really would recommend that you don't use apps. Trusted contacts is an interesting feature. It lets you pick four or five friends, I think, that are your trusted friends. This way, if you ever lose access to your account, which is pretty unlikely given login approvals. Again, that the SMS second factor is going to make it real hard for someone to hack into your account. But anyway, it's still possible. So you can set up some trusted friends, and if you do lose access to your account, you can use their accounts to regain access. Trusted browsers is exactly what it sounds like. So obviously I'm browsing right now. I can set this browser. Oh, well, I can't do it with this browser, but any other browser I could set as a trusted browser. That way when I log in from that browser on that computer, I won't have to enter a second factor authentication code and I won't receive a login notification about it. Obviously this is quite convenient, but if you really think about it, the more secure way to handle this is to not turn on trusted browsers. At the very least, a trusted browser is going to leave you vulnerable if someone has access, physically has access to your computer, like say, I don't know, your mom or your sister or whoever. The last thing we want to look at here is where you're logged in. Now I have one session open. It thinks I'm in Mount Laurel, New Jersey, which is a little bit shady. I'm not in Mount Laurel, New Jersey, but it probably again has to do with this browser I'm using. Uh, so I mean, this is clearly my, my browsing session, so I feel comfortable with that. It's good to go. Close it. All right, so we're going to cut it here for now. Sorry I overran my predicted five minutes by about four minutes. As I said, though, we're going to get back to you in a couple of days with the second part of this video, which will focus uh, more on Facebook's list of privacy settings.